this little video we're going to show you how to um, set up a project and import uh, video and some voiceover and some music into the project. Here we go, we go to files, it's pretty simple. Uh, in files you go to new project and we'll do a video project and we'll call it, uh, there it is up there, we'll call it import because we're going to learn how to import. There we go. And there it is, the Vodio timeline. We've already learned how to move around the timeline and how to split the cursor, so we know how to do all that. And so all we're going to do now is that we're on video track one, which is where we want to be. We'll hit plus. And we know that our footage, the footage that we were looking for, is in C2. We know that we probably want to use the shot with the pan up from the device to her, so we'll probably um, we move our cursor to there, then we split our cursor, we move the yellow to the end roughly, we put a finger between the two cursors and then we drag that down and into the bungee at the bottom and we let it go and it just snaps to the end of the bungee. We then double tap on the white, white line and I'm going to be looking for probably another shot which could be our wide shot of Claire. I move it along, there's the wide shot, the beginning of the wide shot, I double tap And there's a, there's a bit of wide shot. And we do the same again. We hold between the two cursors and we move it down and there's two shots. We'll, and I think on this one is also her piece to camera, her stand up, so her little interview. So we'll move that and there it is. We ask her, you can see her mouth starts to move. So just before that, we double tap on the green cursor. That splits the cursor into the blue and the yellow, which marks, the blue marks the left hand in point, the in point. There we go. And the yellow marks the out point. You move, it to the, move the yellow to the out point and then you drag that down too. So they're the three shots that we want from that. We probably need a couple more shots, but they're not on this sequence that we shot. But here's another advantage of shooting as a sequence rather than individual shots because we had all those shots on one sequence so we were able to bring them into the timeline one after the other without having to get another shot and get another shot but right at the moment we need another shot so we hit the plus that that takes us back there back to our video tab where all our videos live and we hit C3 and there we go there's C3 has popped up now and we move we'll move the green cursor along till we get a shot that we might want. And we probably want two more shots, I think. How do I know? Well, I'm just guessing. But after 30 years, you'd probably want to be able to work this out very quickly. So there's a shot, a close-up shot, that we might be able to use. So let me just take a, a few seconds of that. Before the camera moves back in. So there's a few seconds of that. We pull that down. Double tap again to create the green cursor so we can move along the timeline. We've got one little close up at the very end there, which I think is quite nice. My fingers are a bit slippy, drag the yellow to the end. Pull that, pull that down. And then we've got five shots in there. Now, the great thing about this bungee is what you can do is that you can actually rearrange these shots. For example, that's the close up. Maybe we want, we want to start with the wide shot. So let's go to the wide shot. We move the wide shot. So there's the wide shot now with the close up. That, the one, the close up that tilts up to, to Claire, uh, to her face. And then we've got her little stand up. But maybe before the stand up, we want to have a little bit more of a close up again of the iPhone so we're coming off her face back down to the smartphone and then her stand up uh, and then we've got another a shot of what she's doing. So what we've basically done is we've given our structure and our order a very, very rough order and the two things it's really important to remember here. One is that this order can be changed again in the timeline and two is that if you've bought in this much of a shot you can once it's in the timeline because it's non-destructive you can press those grey handles and just extend the shot. Or, if you're bought in too much, you can press either grey handle and shorten the shot in the timeline. Okay, so now we press the tick and there's all our shots in the timeline. Now, the first thing that I do is that I will, I will check aboard it. So I have a shot on one, on one track and then another shot on another track. So let's do that. And I do that by pressing on the shot and let's, let's pushing it up. The reason I do that is because when they're on the timeline above, you can actually press them and use the handles to extend them, right? But imagine if they're down, if they're down next to the shot, you know, you can't, once they're butting up to a shot, 
like that. You can't extend them anymore, you, nor can you move them, because if they're above the shot, you can slide the shot, or you can shorten it and lengthen it. So having two separate tracks is important for many reasons. And the top track is really the B-roll track, but it's used for many different things, and certainly sliding and shortening shots is one of those. And there's Claire's uh, little stand up there, okay? And there's the final shot. We'll put that up there too, right? See that final shot, which is the little bit of overlay. We want to go down to the audio track, right? So we double tap on the audio track and we hit the little arrow uh, that, that takes it back to the beginning. We hit the plus button. Because we're on an audio track, we'll come to the audio tab. And in there, we've got a voiceover that, we're, that I've recorded called C2. And, the, and I mucked up, so there's three versions of it. So we can either, it's the last version is the one we want. So we can either move to the end move the cursor to the end, uh, or we can just do this. We can just tap on the white line and the cursor will fly down there. So then we double tap the cursor. And the reason we double tap is to split the cursor and create the in point and the out point. And then we, we drag the yellow down to the end and there's our, we've chosen our, our piece of audio. We can listen to it by pressing play. Every year, the Go Mojo. That's right, that's the right bit of audio. We hold it, we pull it down and we let it go and then we hit tick. And there it is, it's in our timeline now. What we want to do is we want to check the voiceover is finishing just before Claire starts to speak. We press that to get it back, we then hit play. Every year, the Go Mojo National Smartphone Competition has people like Claire from all over Australia practicing their digital storytelling skills. Now already I can see that I want Claire to be up a little bit earlier because when, I, when it says people like Claire I want to see her face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shorten that shot on the iPhone there. Just shorten it by pressing the grey handle and dragging it back a little bit. Right? And then I'm going to move the whole shot up here. Okay? And then we'll just see, and then we're going to move this. We'll just leave the close up there and we'll just go back and we'll just see that. See what that looks like. Every year, the Go Mojo National Smartphone Competition has people like Claire from all over Australia practicing their digital story. Now that's much better. That timing is much better. So I think I'm happy with that. So then I'll move, press on this shot and I'll move that shot back. Just by holding it and pressing it, I can then move the shot around. You see that? Okay. And then what we'll do is what we'll do is we'll overlap Claire a little bit. So we'll take her next piece to camera in to, the, to about there. So if we just play it now, we can play it and, and listen to it. All right. Let's have a look. smartphone competition has people like Claire from all over Australia practicing their digital storytelling skills. I want to win the ten thousand dollar first prize so that I can pay for my next year at uni. And there it is and I hope she does. So the next thing that we have to do is that we have to just put a name super up but we want it to start a little bit into Claire's shot because the beginning of Claire's speech is covered by another shot and if the name super started there it'd be in, it'd be running over the top of the other shot and it would look silly so we wanted to start where that shot finishes just there so we do that by actually splitting Claire's piece to camera so we put the green cursor just past the other shot and we hold with two fingers and then we press the little grey tab and there you can see if you tap on that side of the grey tab you can see that there's uh, two grey handles there which means that that's a separate shot. We hold that with two fingers in the middle, we hit the wand, we, we pick a style and we'll, uh, we'll just put a one line style and uh, we hit where it says enter text, we tap that, we scroll that up so we can see what we're typing and we write Claire's uh, name in and then we hit the green t tick. We have to give it a duration and we might make it, we might put it up there for, for two seconds. There we go. Okay, so it's a short one. We can actually, then that's it. And we can go back now and what we'll do, we go down to the next audio track by tapping it. And the bottom track is a track I leave for music. And so we press the plus button again and we search there and then we'll find a song. Now I'm going to use a song called Coming Home. Okay. And there it is. Now just bring in a little bit. 
and we can hit play and if we play it you'll see the music is too loud. All right, so we double tap the music. We'll show you how to do this properly later. You double tap the music, you hit these faders, which are the faders, and we'll just pull the music down. There we go, see how it's coming down? And that's it, we've done it all now. And now we'll just go to the back to the beginning by hitting the little, the little triangle, and we can hit play, and going right across to full screen, and there it is. And let's see what we've got. So that's how we import video, audio and music and how we put it into a little sequence and how we put a, a little name super on there. Still to learn is how to do name supers properly in different versions of them and how to do subtitles and also how to mix that audio, those different audios, my voice, Claire's voice and the music and, and how to duck the audio underneath as well before we render the video and then publish it online and that's coming up in the upcoming videos.